empty and you can go straight in. You know what to do? Yes, ma'am. Tony, you're driving. Turn the car around, keep the engine running. Got it. Right, here we go, children. Tea, please. Right. Something to eat, love? Sausage and mash, all nice or not? No, just tea, thanks. Oh, please, uh, look, I will have some sausages and mash after all. Well, why not, miss? Keep you warm on a night like this. <laughs> Shut up, lady. Take all the money, but... Not the money, little man. We're having a party. I said shut up, lady. to go, Peter. Oh, it's a real giggle. Now why did you have to cosh the woman? She was noisy. Well, twice on the head. She must be 50 if she's a day. <laughs> Until he's getting soft. <laughs> I was pointless, stupid. Just plain sadistic. Why don't you shut up? You sound like a girl's own paper. <laughs> Oh, Tim, dry out. Well, cushioning that old lady was just plain unnecessary. Not to me, it wasn't. Well, just give me one good reason. Yeah, boy. It's my basic philosophy. Explain it to him, Peter. This nation is soft, flabby. A mass of gutless wonders led by a handful of little grey people in power. The only time Britain accomplishes anything is when... I know. When we're at war. Exactly. Do you know why? I should. I've heard it a million times. But do you understand it, little man? War brings out the best in people. They develop virility of spirit. Can it, Peter, will you? Tony, boy. I'm getting terribly tired of Timmy's whining. Maybe he's gone yellow. I have not. What's all the fuss? Did somebody dirty their little hands? No. Peter just kept belting this old lady. Shut the door. Anybody see us come in? Does it matter? It's your houseboat. Of course it matters. My, my, we are jittery tonight. Wasn't it a success? Oh, as heaven went like a charm. And calm down. Calm down, my dear little tartlet. That's the only bit that I enjoy. Till you're afraid you don't know you're alive. I just don't like the sadistic stuff, that's all. Well, I do. Understand, Timmy, dear? And just mind your manners. Or you may be on the receiving end one day. Now, you get this, Peter. Okay, you're older, you're the leader. You supply the boat, the booze, and plan the giggles. But just once, you lay a hand on me, and I'll break every bone in your body. It's better. Little guts. 
Oh, dear. What a pity that Timmy didn't pass his entrance to Oxford. He might have led the world. Oh, stop it, you two. All this arguing, it spoils it for me. Hmm. You're right, you dear little model girl, you. The stench of middle-class morality in here is overpowering. Come on, let's join the others. with the Chief Inspector of Scotland Yard would make one feel safe. I'm sorry, are you afraid of me? I'm terrified. But I rather like it. Let's go back to my place and have coffee. Hello, what's going on over there? Sharp tonight? Yeah, just can't help it. What brings Scotland Yard down to our level? I was just passing by. What gives? Cafe owner and his wife. Probably with violence. Huh? Oh? How bad? Both cash. They live. Anything new for the yard? Not so far, David. All seems very pointless. Twelve pounds taken from the till. It's like that job in Fulham last week. They didn't take any money at all on that one. Uh, violence, no robbery. Yeah. Wonder why. If you ask me, it's kids. Teenagers doing it for kicks. Kids? Hmm. They need a daily dose of belt on their backsides. All they get is a pat on the head until not being only boys. No, no, Inspector. Remember, teenage crime is an environmental problem. Yeah. Well, Jim, let us know if there's anything you want, will you? I'm sure. Good night, David. Good night. Well, the girls, come on, Gillian. George. Yeah. Were you by any chance planning to be in Soho tomorrow? Where in Soho? The Hong Kong Emporium, Rupert Street. Well, why should I be anywhere near the Hong Kong Emporium in Rupert Street? I wanted you to pick me up two tins of a wabi. Two tins of a what? They're a sort of sea slug. A what? Little round white fish, about two inches in diameter. I was planning a Chinese dinner for tomorrow. Ted, if you are in Soho, there's a shop that sells flints to make these guns. Oh, look, I'm not going anywhere near Soho today. Have you won two tins of um, whatever it was you said? I suggest you send our son an heir. After he's bought his flints, he can go to Rupert Street. Oh. Anyway, darling, I much prefer some nice English roast beef. Oh, right. George, you're so conservative. Conservative? About... What? Just because I don't swoon over sea slugs? Cheerio, then. <coughs> oh, it's you. Oh, I hate mornings. Parties are okay, but mornings... Why don't you use the bathroom? Oh, I never thought of it. Ah, oh, Sue? Oh, she'll live. Did she take something last night? Only uh, benzedrine and rum. Well, she's working today. What? On Saturday? 11.30, the Fellini studio is modelling lingerie. And where's our revered leader? Hmm? Gone for the papers. Oh, well. I'll wake the others. Tony, wake up. Tony, Tony is O-U-T out. What did he have last night? Hey, Sue. Sue, come on. Wakey, wakey. Oh, go away. Well, you're working today. Oh, there's plenty of time. Go away. Oh, boy. What a mess. What a party. Hey, Alison, what's up with Peter? All this violence. Coshing that couple last night. Why? For kicks. What else? Oh, you're back. Well, children, you'll be pleased to know we made page one. Page one, no less. The innocent victims of a violent robbery are named Joe and Ada Moss. Hey, he was a war hero. George Medal, hero of London's flaming blitz. I bet you don't even know what a blitz is. I do. Daddy told me. He was a major. A blitz is an attack. We know, little tartlet, we know. Hey, they call us a wave of violence. Isn't that something to contemplate over your purple hearts? <laughs> Makes me weep tears of joy. 
Yes, last night was definitely the most successful giggle yet. No sign of him coming around yet? No, not yet. Well, do Detective Sergeants drink tea? They live on it. Oh, thanks for coming in, young fellow. Had a bit of a night. Thank you. Well, you better get straight in and see G.G. or you may get a bit of a morning. Well, you look like some of the cats brought in. Thanks. Nothing like a compliment to start the day. I see you were in Chelsea last night. Yes, I was passing by. I uh, happened to look in. The proprietor, Moss, still unconscious. Yeah. Caldwell has a hunch it's a bunch of young people. Violence for violence sake, eh? Too many of these cases in the last few months. Mm-hmm. 18 since the beginning of the year. 18. I checked. And it's not all confined to one division. It's happening all over the place. Hammersmith, Fulham, Putney, Chelsea. People being coshed, knocked over the head. Sometimes with no money being taken at all. You'll keep an eye on it, will you? And tell Caldwell that when Master gains consciousness, it's like a copy of his statement. Right. Are you sure Ada's all right? She's fine. You're the one who was badly hurt. Now then, Mr. Moss. Well, I've told you all I know. I mean, it was just two fellas and a girl. What sort of accents do they have? How do you mean? Look, we're trying to get a line on the type of gang operating. Do they sound like a bunch of layabouts, for instance? Well, the girl just sounded ordinary, you know. But the man, the one who spoke, well, he, he sounded well off, educated. Can you remember what he said? He said, we're having a party. Having a party? Well, a party? How many parties do you suppose there were in London last night? What, 50,000? Well, that's not much to go on, I admit. All right, check with all the divisions. Follow up every complaint received about a noisy party. All the details. I'm sick and tired of being told what to do. Oh, shut up, will you, Tim? I have enough of a headache without listening to you. Well, what gives you the right to boss us around, eh? Tim, all Peter wants us to do is put the money in a church offertory box. Yeah, why? Just give me one good reason. I don't have to give you any reasons, little man. But I will. Giving stolen money to a church puts a final lovely twist on the giggle. Now, come on. Let's go. Peter, you said the place was crawling with coppers. We can hardly be arrested for donating money to a church, can we? I'm dying. Really? Well, don't be messy about it, that's all. Come on, little girl. I'll drive you to your modelling job. And en route, Timmy Coles here can donate the night's proceeds to the service of good. Good boy. Afterwards, you can go home to mummy. Right, Timmy boy. Time to make the offering. Divine, isn't it? In more ways than one. Positively Machiavellian. Alison. Hmm? Do you think Timmy Moy is turning yellow on us? Timmy Moy? Right. He's not, you know. He's weak. And he's toughening up. For heaven's sake, Peter, look. Hmm? Look. <laughs> How very generous of you and your friends. God bless you all. Would you mind my asking your name? Uh, Coles, sir. Tim Coles. Coles? By any chance, are you related to Mr. J.R. Coles, the surgeon? Oh, yes, sir. He's my father. Well, isn't it a small world? He took out my appendix. <laughs> I'm so glad to meet you, Mr. Coles. Remember me to your father. I will, sir. Having a son like you must make him very, very proud. to Danny. I will. He admires you tremendously. I'll see you all later. We look forward to it, little man. Oh, and Peter, we're late. The Lena Studio is Water Street. Uh -huh.
Timmy? Hey, Mother. Do you know what time it is? Watch this. Another You're My Baby Boy lecture? Where have you been? Out. I'm aware of that, but where? At a party. All night? I stayed on Peter Sloane's boat. You've been drinking. You reek of alcohol. Yes, I've been drinking. I'm not a kid any longer. I shall be 20 in three months. And if I want to drink, I will. And if I want to stay out all night, I shall do just that. So will you please leave me alone and mind your own business? Let there be light for our lovely pictures now. Let's see what my little meter says. Oh, yes. F8. Now, see what we can do with you lovely ladies. Um, Sue, darling, a little closer into Elspeth. There's this... Oops, sorry, sweetie. Now, just hold those positions. Good girls now. Be patient. Oh, I feel hideous. Big night. Mm, the most on Peter Sloan's houseboat. Do I look hung? You look fine. I figure it'll be two years before it shows. We only live once. I want to be ugly when I go. Why don't you join us some night? Because I've never been invited. I'm inviting you right now. Just bring a man and a bottle. Now, don't be naughty, ladies. Sit still now. Be patient. A few seconds. Hold it. There we are. Lovely. Very good. <laughs> What are you selling? You the owner of this boat, sir? Nope. So go away. Detective Inspector Caldwell, Chelsea Division. Well, good luck, Inspector. Was there a, a party here last night? There's a party here every night. You mind telling me your name, sir? King. K for kook, I for idiot, N for nut, G for goodbye. Mm. Now leave me alone. The owner's a man named Peter Sloan. Know where I can find him? Right here. Who wants to know? Chief Inspector Caldwell. Hmm. You have my sympathy, Inspector. No, one of our constables aborted a very noisy party here last night. Do they? Your constable should have a very bright future. It's in his report that four people arrived here at approximately 20 past 12. Do you know who they were? No idea. People come and go at my parties as they wish. Meaning you don't remember? Meaning I'm not going to try to. Am I being charged with anything? No, I'm merely asking for your cooperation, sir. Yeah, well, you're not going to get it. Do you know why? I don't happen to like policemen. And a bunch of middle-class morons. It's not surprising, considering the salaries they're paying. So, Inspector, go dig for your garbage in someone else's dustbin. Do I make myself clear? I get the point. Thank you, sir. You know the way out. Did you tell him anything? My name. There's more to it than a noisy party. Savage attacks in the last three weeks. Here, here, and here. All small shops? All cafes? Think it's the same gang? Oh, the trademarks are the same. Surprise, violent, cosh attacks, get away. Doesn't make any sort of sense, does it? Well, unless we're dealing with a gang of sadists. Yes, I think we are. Violence for the sake of violence. Anything on the noisy party angle? We had eight phone in complaints on Friday. All investigated. Nothing. Law-abiding citizens whooping it up. Noisy, but harmless. Oh, the party angle was just a straw in the wind, anyway. Hi, sir. There was one other, sir. Um, P.C. Saunders noticed a pretty riotous binge aboard a Chelsea houseboat. Owned by a nasty piece of work named Peter Sloan. I dropped by this morning. You did? Yes, sir. We've had our eye on Sloan for some time now. Why? Well, we think he may be distributing drugs to teenagers. We've nothing to go on. These kids all play terribly cool, drink sex, wild parties. I suppose that models are their affair. Oh, things have changed since I was a teenager. I don't mean the discovery of electricity either. So kids these days... Kids these days are no different to what we were. Kate, you're out of your mind. In our day, it was fast sports cars, parties on the river. Duke Ellington, Chianti out of those wicker basketed bottles. Yeah, we didn't go around beating people up. They don't now. They do, you know, love. Only a few. Kate, they're violent, restless. Sometimes I think they're even half crazy. Maybe ours included. That's nonsense. Look, how do we know what Matthew and Prue are doing behind our backs? Of course we do. How can you be sure that Prue isn't, well, sleeping around? 
I'm absolutely positive. Why? Because I'm her mother. I know where she goes and who she goes with. Because she tells you? Of course she tells me. There are certain rules in this house. In this house, yes. I mean, here we got a bit of discipline. Even so, I don't understand. You know your trouble, George Gideon. No, tell You're me. getting fat between the ears. Oh, thank you. You're old, pious, and crabby before your time. You're narrow-minded and insensitive to the needs of youth. And now you'd better get ready to carve our nice, safe, conservative British roast beef. Oh, well, maybe you're right. But who does these horrible things? Gangs, we think. Young gangs. These days, teenagers get blamed for everything. Well, these days, they do everything. I didn't. And I was a teenager myself, and not so long ago. I never went around coshing old women on the head, and I never met anyone around Chelsea who did. Well, you've never seen the mods and rockers around here? Oh, sure, but they just fight with each other, or kill themselves on their motorbikes. What about the uh, champagne and reefer set? Well, they just run their own private orgies, and they're so wet they wouldn't hurt a mouse. I know, I've seen plenty of them. I've been to their parties. As a matter of fact, I was invited to one today. Oh, you were? I was on a modeling job. Lingerie. I bet you looked adorable. With a girl named Sue something. She invited me to a Chelsea houseboat. Whose? You mean whose boat? Yeah. A man named Peter Sloan. Oh, how charming. Did you accept? Darling, it's a standing invitation for almost any night of the week. Why? Accept, will you? Ask me. Sure. As long as you promise not to act like a policeman. Am I acting like a policeman now? <laughs> Darling, do you mind? Use your tiny head. Hey, you're a bit tense tonight, Peter boy. What's up? Nothing. Just being careful. Are you sniffing the pack that's after us? What pack? A bunch of dumb coppers. Why do you want us here? The next giggle. But so the place is alive with the police. Oh. They even follow you into the loo. What's the matter, little man? Afraid? No. I just thought I would appear at home tomorrow night. Mater's beginning to act up. Yeah, like Tony says, Chelsea's lousy with cops. Chelsea is. Kensington, isn't it? There are no late night places in Kensington. We're not going to do a late night place. We're not. Then what? <laughs> Your uncle and aunt. What? His aunt and uncle. You're going to rob them? Didn't your uncle threaten to fire you from your cushy little city job? Oh, sure. So what? He didn't. Ah, yeah, but there's always the next time. And you'll be out of a job. You'd never, never become a bright, shining, whiter-than-white Lloyd's underwriter. And think how nice it would be to get your own back on it. But he's my uncle. Precisely. And respectable. And his respectability dusts off on you. The only person that coppers would never suspect is his dear nephew Tony. Even if he is late at the office three days out of four. Peter, it doesn't make sense. Why not? The old snake never keeps cash at home. He's so mean he hasn't bought Aunt Mary a cultured pearl since the day they got married. But he has a Mugliani. Picture? It's different. I've seen it in his drawing room. A little darling of a Mugliani. It's his pride and joy. Isn't it a giggle? But what are we going to do with it? Give it to the National Gallery? No. We're going to have a lovely little bonfire and burn it. But Peter is worth a small fortune. About 3,000 pounds in today's market. But what's the point? It's his most treasured possession. He'll hate losing it. He'll practically die when he gets the ashes through the post. Isn't it divine? Now, what's really behind it? Nothing. Just another giggle. Oh, come on, Peter, we know you. And don't give us the guff that Tony's uncle's one of the grey, flabby upper classes. Come clean. What's Tony's uncle ever done to you? We are a bright little man this evening, aren't we? No. Just betting you've another reason, that's all. All right. I have. Then give. You know your cousin. 
You mean Margaret? Yes, Margaret. We were going to be married. But you, married? Yes, married. And your dear, sweet, respectable uncle said no. He made her a ward of court and had me sent to jail for trying to see her. Your stinking uncle had the gall to say that I was socially unacceptable. Me. Oh, yes, little man. I've got a reason. A damn good reason. I hate dear uncle's guts. Next on the left. Okay, Alison, hold it. Tony, you keep necking with Sue. If a policeman comes, keep talking. Right. And Peter, hmm? don't work the old boy over too hard, will you? Sue, have you got your driving license? Yeah, in the glove compartment. Okay, Tim, you're You're next. Is Peter coming? He's right behind us. I think it's all clear. All right, darling, let's go. On the other side of the road, about uh, five houses down. <laughs> he's, he's bleeding. You should be used to the sight of blood. Your father's a surgeon. Okay, children, I've got it. Come on. Sorry, my dear, but that's all I can remember. Never mind, darling. <laughs> and all that's missing is the paintings. Yes, the darling little Modigliani. We're terribly attached to it. What's it worth? We were once offered 2,700 pounds for it. But we wouldn't sell. Aunt Mary! Yes, tell me. Oh. Mr. King, you have some very valuable bedroom, china yeah? and silver here. Things much more easily disposed of than the Modigliani. Yes, that's true. Uncle Charles, how are you? It takes more than a knock on the head, my boy. They told me at the office what had happened. I came right over. This is our nephew, Anthony, Chief Inspector Keane of Scotland Yard. How do you do? Hello. I appreciate your coming, Tony. Oh, I was worried about you. Thank you. You were saying, Mr. Keane? It's just if this is a straightforward robbery, why hasn't anything else been taken? Well, I... I don't know. It does seem odd. Could it be somebody with a grudge, somebody who knows how fond you are of this painting and uh, took it just out of spite? As a businessman, I suppose I may have made enemies from time to time. But nobody, nobody I've ever had anything to do with could possibly stoop as low as this. John. Yes, dear? Can you spare a minute? No, I'm afraid I can't. It's important. About Timmy. Oh, look, my dear, you worry too much. He'll be all right once he's made up his mind what he wants to do. Well, it's the people that he mixes with, the, the things he does. Now, look, dear, all boys go through a wild phase. Even I did. It's perfectly normal. A few drinks, a few girls, a few parties, a bit of horseplay. It's more important than that, John. It'll only take a minute. Well, I haven't got a minute. I'm due at the hospital at ten in four minutes precisely. Well, Mother... What am I supposed to have done this time? Why the big drama with the old boy this morning? Perhaps you'll be kind enough to tell me how you got this. What? I know what it is. When I was a nurse, I saw lots of them. A marijuana cigarette. Well, I didn't smoke it, did I? Or you wouldn't have found it, would you? 
In a minute, you'll tell me it's just my imagination, like the blood on your clothes. Oh, yes, I, I remember now. I had a nosebleed while I was on Peter Sloane's boat. Or oh, were you fighting? No. Timmy, what have we done to you to make you want these things? Violence, marijuana... I didn't smoke it, did I? How have we failed you? Oh, mother, for God's sake, why don't you shut up and leave me alone? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? 3,000 quid's worth of picture going up in smoke. Fabulous. Doesn't that give you a kick? As a matter of fact, it doesn't. I think you're a nutcase. Get lost, little man. You bore me. I bet that'll make the uncle squirm, eh? <laughs> it's the best giggle yet. Tony boy, this is your uncle. You can have the pleasure of mailing the ashes back to him. Alison will help you. Come on, let's join the party. Uncle Charles will absolutely bust a gut. Finish it for me, will you, darling? <laughs> Top I want him quick. Let's just get him in here. Hurry! Panic, little man. The chap with Elspeth McRae. What about it? He's a copper. You're joking. Chief Inspector David Keane of Scotland Yard. How do you know? I met him. He was questioning Uncle Charles this morning. Has he seen you? No. You sure? Yes. Right. Stay here. All night? If necessary. Lock the door after me. Chat with Elspeth McRae. Yeah? He's a copper. What? Scotland Yard, smart. <laughs> and she brought him here. She did. Did she know he was a copper? She said he was from New Zealand. Well, that might be just his story. Better be for her sake. What are we gonna do? Don't be absurd, little man. He's our guest. He played very cool. You mean let him stay? Sure. And enjoy it. Enjoy it. The curious pleasure of watching a stupid cop going round and round in circles getting absolutely nowhere. Tell everyone we're having an early night. Go easy on the drinks, no funny stuff. Well, go on. Isn't it dangerous having him here? Sure. That's the giggle. Well, what did you think of the party? Dull. How about Peter Sloan? I think he guessed who I was. But how? I don't know, he just did. I saw young Colonel's person the word around. Everything was just too mild and innocent. Have you got any theories? 
Sloan could be her man. Mm. But you've got nothing to go on, though, have you? No. Just instinct. Comes in handy sometimes. Now, Peter, it's too dangerous. Besides, I like Elspeth. Elspeth bought a copper. She needs to be taught a lesson. One she'll remember. Yeah, shows was a bitch. Look, if we do anything to her, the cops will be around here like grease lightning. This isn't a giggle, Peter. You're right. It's revenge. Revenge isn't smart. Not just now. The cops aren't that stupid. Oh, yes, they are, little man. If we were a bunch of Soho yobs, they could read us. Another yob mine. But we're not yobs. And they think we're far too intelligent to work over a girl like Elspeth. Especially when she's on snogging terms with Mr. Scotland Yard. But they'll know. He'll know. He'll suspect. He won't be able to prove anything. When are we going to do it, Peter? Tomorrow night. Oh, look, Peter, be reasonable. Use your head for once. Beating up Elspeth the Cray is just plain madness. So? Aren't we all a little mad? Hello? Elspeth McCray. Yes, speaking. Hey, take a tip, sweetheart. Don't go out tonight. Peter Sloan is going to beat you up for bringing a copper to his party. Hello? Hello? Fear idiotic bureaucratic red tape. Never mind, Joe. Another two weeks and you'll be retired. Then you can thumb your nose with a lot of us. He's expecting you. Thank you. Keen here. Oh, hello, Elspeth. What do you say? Mr. King had a box of ashes in his mail this morning. The remains of his Modigliani. What? The painting. Yeah, I know it's a painting. Yeah. Crazy, isn't it? Absolutely senseless. Fantastic. Come in. Yes, David. Sir, do you remember a party I was taken to on Sloane's houseboat by a girl? What about it? Well, she's just received an anonymous phone call telling her that Sloane's going to work her over tonight. I thought she and Sloane were friends. That's how you got to the party, isn't it? Yes, I suppose he guessed who I was. Colwell, keep a surveillance on that boat 24 hours a day. Right, sir. Sir, with your permission, I'd, uh, I'd like to lay a little trap for Sloane. Are you using the girl as bait? Yes, sir. But she'd be in no danger. Well, she'd better not be in any danger. You're going to be right behind her, is that clear? Yes, sir. If you can stand the novelty of the position. We're off. Go and get the jalopy. Peter, I'm scared. Oh, I've told you before, Todd, but that's why we do it. Besides, Elspeth needs a lesson. Yeah. Off you go. Buzz off, little girl. Business. We're ready? Yeah. Where's Coles? You're a drunk little man. Who says I'm drunk? I do. And that cuts you out of the giggle. A Peter. We wouldn't leave your little buddy out of the party, would you? Come on, let's go. You're not going anywhere. One of these days, I'm going to have to straighten you out, little man. Little man. Come on, this is going to be the best giggle yet. There they go. There's a phone box not far from her flat. I'll call her from there.
right. Hello? Uh, Miss McRae, uh, this is Sergeant Weatherby, New Scotland Yard here. I've got a message for you from Chief Inspector Keane. Yes, Sergeant? Uh, he said, would you meet him outside the Black Crow Club in Morgan Street in ten minutes? That'll be at ten o'clock. Uh, yes, miss, that's right. He says it's very important. Tell him I'll be there. Thank you, Sergeant. Think it was Sloan's voice? No. Too deep, I think. Look, you go ahead. I'll be three minutes behind you. Make it one minute. I'm scared absolutely putrid. Word of honor, no one's going to touch you tonight except me. Now, Black Crow Club, right? No. Cruise past the Elspeth's flat. Why? Because I say so, that's why. Say so, that's why. Somebody's tipped Elsford off. You and Alison are going home. Home at ten o'clock? Yes, home. who tiptoes with them? I think I'm a pretty good idea. So too. Come on up. I'll get the car. Take care on your way out. Bye. Lock the door. Now, oh, little man, you and I are going to have a nice, quiet little talk. And you can cut out the drunk act. What's the matter? Cute, isn't he? Darling. You tipped off Elspeth, didn't you? So admit it. You're crazy. I told you you'd be at the receiving end of this one day, didn't I, Timmy boy? No, Peter, you listen. You lying, stinking creep. 
You found Elspeth mourned her, didn't you? I didn't. Sober suddenly, isn't he? Yes. Why the drunk act? Oh, Peter, for heaven's sake! <laughs> you are. Do you know him? Tim Coles. His father's a doctor. I'd better get his father down here, quick. I've never even heard of Moss's All Night Cafe. I had no idea that Tony King's uncle owned a Mogliani. I had absolutely nothing at all to do with these coshings. What about Tim Coles? We had a bit of a giggle on my boat. Tim got drunk, he attacked me, so I defended myself. With a cosh? Yes. Thank you. Commander, you're typical of all the addle-headed, grey little men who hold positions of authority in this country. You're automatically suspicious of anyone who's different or original. Finished? Finished. And bored. Well, we're going to change all that. You're in for the biggest giggle of your life. This is a message from the hospital. Tim Coles is dead. You're on a murder charge. Take him away, David, and charge him with murder. <laughs> <laughs> 